everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a Krispy Kreme donut acrylic nail art design. It's got an opening donut box filled with donuts and then some donuts on the side. One thing that I always love about Krispy Kreme shops is that they give you one as like an extra bonus one when you're going through like, or if you're getting a box or something, they're usually like, here, have another one. So normally when I do a design that has a box of something like I did a Domino's pizza, the one that's outside the box, I took out of the pizza that was inside the box so that there was one missing. However, for this one, because of the way Krispy Kreme is, and they're always like, here, have some more, have some more. I have a full box of donuts plus some on the side because that is the way to do it. I hope you guys like this as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a dark green acrylic across the back of the nail. Krispy Kreme's colors are red, dark green, and white. And so to have that really rich contrast of the background color compared to the white box and then the brightly colored donut frostings, that dark green background is just so beautiful and offsets the whole thing. Then we're going to encapsulate the background with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure that it is nice and strong and just give it that beautiful shape. Another reason I always like to encapsulate is that I feel like it makes whatever 3D art is on top look a little bit elevated, where if it's an entirely, you know, color acrylic design or it has a layer of gel polish on top of it, it doesn't have that little floaty effect and I love the way that that looks. So now on a piece of scratch paper, I'm going to draw out my template to make my Krispy Kreme donut box with. If you are new to the concept of making templates for nail art or really anything really, I have a live class on making templates that I did a little while ago and I'll put a link to that to the, in the description box below. If a template design or a design that would benefit from the use of a template is something that you're interested in and you've never tried one before or you've done it and it hasn't worked out very well or whatever the case may be, I would highly recommend you go and check out that class. Like I said, it was a live class, um, but that link will be in the description box below. It goes through everything that you need to know as far as making templates, the little tri tips and tricks I use when I make mine, as well as why you would want to make one and how to use them after it's made. So after this template is done, we're going to lay a nail form backing over the top of it. And then on the inner rectangle of the bigger rectangle, we're going to sculpt a clear panel over the top of it. That is for the window that you would see the donuts through. And then with white acrylic, we're going to switch and sculpt everything else with white. For this particular box, you need one of those rectangles that has the white square in the middle or the white rectangle in the middle. You need a second one of those large rectangles that is solid white and then two of each of each of those side rectangles. So I have those little two bars on the side. You need two of each of those. As you're sculpting these or anything that you're making something like this that you are making separate pieces and you're going to attach them and assemble it later, the biggest thing to keep in mind is it doesn't need to be perfect. It, I mean, obviously make it as smooth and as perfect and as straight as you can, but it doesn't need to be. It'll be fixed. You can file it. You can adjust things. It'll all get, you know, it'll all change. So if it's perfect right now, that doesn't even mean that when you go to assemble it, it'll be completely square and flawless. Or if it isn't perfect now, that it won't end up that way. So it's just a good thing to kind of give yourself a bit of, um, give yourself some breather room, give yourself a little bit of leeway and just don't stress about it too much, which I know sometimes it's easier said than done, especially if you're trying something new and you really just want it to work out. You can get all of these little, you know, voices in your head saying that, oh, it doesn't look good enough or this isn't straight enough or whatever it is, but just try to enjoy the process and know that you can fix it later if you need to. Hopefully you don't need to, but that doesn't mean you can't. After all your pieces have been sculpted, take a straight edge file and file their edges just so that they are a little bit straighter. That's step one in making this as flawless as possible. And I would recommend it even if your sides look perfectly straight. Go ahead, file them. Doesn't take much time and it'll make the whole assembly process that much easier. Then you're going to grab those skinny rectangles and you're going to glue them to the plain white bigger rectangle. Start on one side, just pick a side and then go around in a circle, gluing each one in place. As you're gluing them, even on mine, you can easily see right now that the edges aren't completely flush. It's not perfect. And again, it doesn't need to be. It's, you know, it's part of the process. Take more of your white acrylic and you're going to fill in any gaps that you may see or anything that is uneven. But remember, we are going to file it yet more. So if it's a little bit un uneven or wacky or rough looking, it's still fine. It's still just, you know, a-okay. So keep adding all this. The biggest thing to remember after the end of this particular step is you want it to be strong. If you did not attach it together or you didn't add any more acrylic on top of it, that little bit of nail glue would be very weak and it would easily break. So after you fill in all of these gaps, you just want to make sure that what you have is a strong box or box bottom that isn't going to, none of the sides are going to fall off. If you file it, you don't want to worry about anything bending or breaking or chipping. You just want to make sure you have strength here. For that reason, I would recommend using a type of acrylic that you know to be strong. So something like a sculpture acrylic versus something that's more made for dipping powder or 3D. Although to be honest, some dipping powder is incredibly strong. 
I just would make sure that the, whatever it is that you're using, you're familiar with so that you know it isn't going to be brittle. After you are done with all the sculpting and you've set it to the side to cure for a little bit so that when you click on it, it makes a nice little clicking sound, then you can go ahead and you can start filing it into shape. You can use a hand file or an e-file, whichever way you are more comfortable with. I am going to use my e-file. I feel like I can get straighter lines with an e-file usually than if I use a hand file but for you, it may be different. As you're going through and filing all of these edges, you can just file the top to make it square. You can file every single edge you see. You can file the inside of the box. You can file the outside of the box. Wherever it seems like it needs just a little bit of straightening out, go ahead and file it. If you are going to use an e-file for this, use one that is a barrel bit, a straight-sided barrel bit. Do not use a cone-shaped or a football-shaped bit. Don't use something that's like a under-the-nail cleaner bit. You don't want any of those. You just want like a basic, medium carbide barrel bit and that is going to give you the best results for this particular type of filing after you've got everything and you're happy with it then on one of the sides like the back side of your box you're going to carve a bar shape out of the middle of it within that middle area you just carved out you're going to want to make sure that a bar bead will fit into it with a piece of wire going through it so the wire is going to be on the inside of the box on the edges with the bead in the middle this is another thing that i have a class on i have a class all on hinges so if this is something that again just like the other one seems like it'd be something you'd like to learn a little bit more about with a little more attention paid to all of the ins and outs then this would be another class for you again there will be a link to that one as well in the description box below so we've got the little bar bead attached so the wires attached attached to the bottom of the box and the bead is going to be attached to the top of the box put a little nail glue on the bead and then hold the lid of the box firmly in place until it seems like it is glued down it's dried a little bit and you can wiggle it and it doesn't slide then you're going to attach the bead a little more securely to the top of the box with more of your white acrylic i would recommend using a bead that is somewhat close to the color of your box whether that be clear or a white or a pearl color you just don't want something like neon green or yellow or some bright color that would really show after that's done i'm going to draw a little grid across my <laughs> across my box my box lid template and i'm going to use that to make the sizes of donuts that i'm going to use if you don't chances are your donuts are either going to be way too big or way too small and they won't fit in the box or they will look dwarfed in the box so after you have that little grid made you can use that just as a reference on how big to make the donuts use a donut color acrylic a fried donut not like the frosting color but just like the base color and you're going to sculpt a circle push the sides in on the circle so that it's a little bit taller and then use a dotting tool to carve in the middle make as many donuts as you'd like on one of them i took my e-file and i carved a little bite out of it one of them i actually just like took a whole big area off of it but you're going to take your donuts and you're going to take a couple bites out of a few of them and then start gluing them into your box i have a little bit of nail glue on a nail form backing next to me and i am taking each donut as i'm picking it up with my tweezers dipping it into the nail glue and then placing it in the box you're also going to want to glue down your donuts that are outside the box. Before you glue the box on, kind of consider how you're going to place the donuts outside the box so that you leave enough room either above or below the box to place them. After everything has been glued in place, it's all attached, then you can take some colors of gel polish and use them to frost the donuts. I used a a brown color of gel polish for the chocolate ones which are my personal favorite and then i also grabbed a pink and a yellow some of the donuts don't necessarily need to have a color of frosting on them they could just be add some gel top coat and they would have like a classic glazed look to them or however you want to do it there are so many different colors and styles of donuts that Krispy cream offers most of them don't even have the hole in the middle they have a bunch of different filled donuts they have uh, like apple fritters and uh, long johns there's just so many things so if you wanted to switch it up and make some different styles of donuts even farther than i did you certainly could i'm also going to take some glitter i'm going to mix that with some top coat and i'm going to use that to add some sprinkles to some of my donuts not all of them just a few i wanted a nice variety and just to kind of keep things you know keep them all a little bit a little different at some different styles i'm going to add some stripes across some of them to add like a one little drizzle of white chocolate or something across a few of them there's just so many different different designs and different flavors that they have i was looking at Krispy Kreme's website at their menu when i was trying to decide what i wanted to do for the different donuts and it was overwhelming the variety of things that they offer so it's just really fun and it's just you know one of those things you get to play around with and choose what you like and choose what you would like to do after you have all of them are glazed and frosted the way you want you're going to do one last final coat on them with a layer of gel top coat make sure they look really shiny that's one of the big things with them is you want to make sure that they look nice and shiny and glossy and recently frosted make sure you hit all of the donuts with that little bit of a glaze and then cure that again 
After you are done with that, I'm going to apply some gel top coat to the inside of the lid of the box right over that window to help increase the clarity. Once that's done, I'm going to cure that and then close the box and then with some acrylic paint, I'm going to start writing out all of the different little designs that are on the box. I'm going to begin with red paint and write Krispy Kreme right across the top of the lid. As you are writing this, you you know, depending on how much space you have, this logo is rather intensive. There's a lot of little details to it. There's a lot of, you know, extra lines here and there, and it's a fairly long word. You may not have the space to write everything, if especially if your box is smaller than mine. If that's the case, there's like a little a shape that kind of goes around the Krispy Kreme logo that's on most of the boxes. You could do that instead and just sort of simplify it and bring it down a bit if you wanted to. That is what I'm doing now with the green. So you could say do this like little green kind of a outline shape that would go around the logo and then make a red line inside of it to give you that red and green logo without actually writing out the word Krispy Kreme just in case it's, I mean, it's a lot to write and it is a really long, a really long logo with not that much space on a tiny little box. After you have that little logo written out, then I'm going to take and I'm going to use the same color of dark green and I'm going to cover this box with polka dots. There are so many little dots across the entire box. I would recommend starting in one place and then using that as your guide and very carefully going through and adding dots across the entire box. You wanna try your best to make sure that the spacing stays pretty even so that the dots are all on a, an even grid. They don't get closer or farther apart. Unless you are a robot, it is impossible to make sure that they are actually legitimately perfect, but do your best. Go through after you do the lid and then make sure you add all of those little polka dots all the way around the box around the sides as well. As you are adding these little polka dots around the sides, the good thing with the sides is because it's the same height all the way around, if you know, for instance, that you do four dots, you just have to make sure that you space out those four dots in rows going all the way around and it goes pretty quick. It seems like it would be something that would be very tedious and time consuming, but it really isn't too bad. After all of those are done, then I'm going to take and apply some matte top coat over the background. Just kind of tuck it in all the way around all of those different little places. And then after that has been cured, I'm going to take a 3D glaze, which is going to give you a satin finish, not glossy and not matte. And I'm going to apply that to my box to give it that coated cardboard type of a look. That air dries. Once that's done, you're all done. And this little Krispy Kreme box is done. It's ready for ready for action. Take it into a board meeting the next time you're asked to bring donuts in for the morning meeting. And somebody might get mad at you because you don't actually have donuts. But you'd have a really cool piece of art instead. So, you know, win-win, maybe. Less calories, more fun. I don't know. Try it. See how it goes. Let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys like this. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.